this is Colin Thompson. In today's Corona Coaches video, we take a step away from our typical interview with a life coach, and we're going to be having a conversation with a very close friend of mine here in Shanghai, China. Uh, my friend him has a very unique story that when he told me, I mentioned he must share it with the audience because there are several lessons to be learned. Over the last nine to 10 weeks, him has been under self-quarantine, uh, mandatory quarantine, five different times. And each of those times were two weeks minimum. He actually has about, I think, three or four more days to go on his last quarantine. And he tells us of his journey from, from Shanghai, China, to Hong Kong, to Shanghai, to Japan, and back to Shanghai. The important part here is how in each leg of his journey, before he had to follow a mandatory quarantine, he self-quarantined each time on his own. The reason being, he recognized that people were not following the proper guidelines, which may have put him at risk, and he wanted to make sure that he did not put anybody else at risk. So I know globally, uh, people now are, are caught in the middle as to whether or not to follow the guidelines put forth by their cities. So I hope this video provides a good example, uh, proves to be a good example of why you want to follow the guidelines, even though they may bring some discomfort to you. We want to do everything we can to avoid having a mandatory quarantine. Mandatory quarantine means you literally cannot leave your house. So um, enjoy the video and I hope you take some good lessons away. So him, look, you just told me a great story about your five quarantines. Uh, I want you to, five quarantines in, in nine weeks, right? So I want you to share that story and just to give some context. You are, not, you are now back where I am in Shanghai, China. However, you are still under quarantine. You have, what, four more days? Uh... Yeah, three days, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> three, three, yeah. three more days. So what we want to hear is take us back from your first quarantine all mm -hmm. the way through to the fifth, the fifth quarantine. And let me say this, throughout this time, did you ever have the virus? No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I had, and I, it was so mild, mild that I didn't yeah yeah maybe the quarantine helped right okay so so um and, and please take a moment to introduce yourself oh um yes hello i'm i'm him and i'm from i'm living in shanghai but my parents are from hong kong and i've lived in shanghai for maybe the past two three years and uh yeah i'm a freelancer no don't don't forget about your belgian side the what your belgian side belgium you're from belgium right no, from Holland. Holland, excuse me. Uh, Holland, excuse born me. Born and grew up in Holland. And um, yeah, basically, I, if I tell that to anybody, nobody will believe me because I don't. <laughs> it's, like a it's, on, it's on tape now. It's on tape yeah, now. Because, uh, yeah, my parents are from Hong Kong. That's why. So basically, I just tell maybe most of the people I'm from Hong Kong and then they will, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah you got that. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, what happened in the. My first quarantine was, uh, that happened when the Wuhan, the first breakout happened, and that was in January. About 20th? It was ja end, of, end of January, right? Yeah. And then I, I was staying at my um, like current wife. <laughs> Actually, I was, I was planning to, to get married, <laughs> and it wasn't ready yet. And I had to kind of like, I'm missing some documents in Hong Kong. So anyway, I. I, and that breakout just happened, and I was still at my um, uh, how to say that my, uh, <laughs> uh, girlfriend's place, and then I was um, fiance, fiance, fiance. Oh right, fiance. That's the word, fiance's place. And um, so when and that's, that that's in Shanghai, right? Shanghai. Yeah, yeah, in Shanghai, okay. in Shanghai. So when that broke out, I we kind of watched the TV and I couldn't get out. I saw there's too many people like scared and like it's all these gloomy th things on the news. So I thought hmm, better stay at home. And also because her parents were also living together. So their suggestion is also not going out. So don't go outside. We will not risk um, to all make, or make, make them even worry even more about us. So we just um, yeah, stayed inside. During the whole, like I guess, ten days or ten to, yeah, something like that. For and then and then because I I booked my tickets, so I need to go, need to leave, and I need to go to Hong Kong, and uh, pack my stuff, and then I wear double masks 
<laughs> that question for you. In, in those 10 days in Shanghai, did, did one of you go out for food and things like that, or nobody went out? Sorry, what did you say? Those, those 10 days in Shanghai, did anybody go out for food? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, people at that time wasn't still so so serious yet, but it's uh, like people getting to understand, okay, wow, it's uh, it's so infectious and, you know, people beginning to learn about the, this virus. But right. in the beginning, people was just like wear a mask and then still go to crowd okay. places, buy stuff they need. So I, I, at that time, I, when I need to leave Shanghai, I kind of like, I was very careful and I, I kind of like uh, wear double masks and like right, double mask. <laughs> you're, going, you're going to Hong Kong because you had to get paperwork for your wedding, for your marriage. Yes, exactly, because I need to uh, get my documents for the wedding that's supposed to, uh, because I'm going to marry in Sh uh, Shanghai, that's what I wanted. And um, so when I, once I'm back in Hong Kong, um, there was like no people checking checking my temperature and it's just like really casual mm. um so i i was basically i knew that because i'm 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 from uh, i came from mainland china and i know that hong kong people would kind of don't want to meet uh, kind <laughs> of like yeah you, you might have this virus um, kind of thing. Uh, and then I, I isolate myself you know i i just, I just told everybody yeah i know what's this, i know the situation and i, I Let's see if we can meet after the 14 days. And uh, this, this is your second, this is your second sort of isolation. The first isolation in, in, in Shanghai when it first came down, you guys went out only when needed for food. Now you go to Hong Kong and you recognize yeah. Hong Kong's not really taking the precautions. You want to, you want to quarantine a, a self, self quarantine yourself for 14 days. Yeah, yeah. And, and Hong Kong is also getting more uh, serious at the time, just like right before it. And then, um so during hong kong the days i still need to eat right and i need to go out so i kind of like also taking mask and but i uh, hong kong is a good thing it's like everybody already wearing masks right. but I, it just i was also trying to looking for masks to buy but it basically Nothing. was too difficult and yeah. Yeah, it was not no way possible unless you can pay for very expensive like the <laughs> Actually, at the end, I paid very expensive for some N95 masks, and it was around 55 Hong Kong dollar per per each. But this is actually each? already, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's that's actually like, that's like that's like eight US dollars per mask. Yeah, yeah. Well, originally, it's it's maybe ten times or twenty times cheaper. Wow. But anyway, life is important, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, my friend. So that's why uh, I, I still have buy some, and then. Uh, for this, you know, going back to Shanghai, I need, I know, I know I need to also give some to my uh, fiance's uh, family as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but in Hong Kong, um, what I, what I found is like, I think that, you no, know, there are still protests happening and all these noises and telling, you know, the, the case, sh the, the gates should be closed. So right, right. They, they emphasize, you know, uh, we should close the gates uh, between Hong Kong and Shenzhen and all these, you know, to block all these any virus that can come in. So at that time, I kind of know that I need to get out uh, as early as possible again, <laughs> because before they close the gates, I need to get out. Get out back to Shenzhen. It's, it's funny because we were doing the opposite thing. I think I told you we were supposed to go to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And we decided we're not going to go to Hong Kong because we're scared we go to Hong Kong. We can't get back to Shanghai. So while you, while you were... Were you worried about not being able to get out of Hong Kong? We would what we would consider about the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, and then um, so and then I, w I went on to um, to fly back to Shanghai. And now we're at now I think we're what, mid mid February, early February, mm, mid February. I think yeah, it was maybe mid February. Yeah, I guess so. And then I kind of like, when I traveled back to Shanghai, there was like um, very, like I never, ha it never happened to me. It's like nobody on the app, app like no, no <laughs> one on the airplane or like totally empty streets. It's yeah. like 
like a doom zine kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very strange, right? Very yeah, strange. It's very strange. Um, also in the airport, like just maybe a few people and checking your your temperature and that's it. So I felt mm, it's kind of pretty relaxed actually. <laughs> Nobody, because I was I was pretty worried about this. You know, the airports are quite of like difficult, um, dangerous zone, right? But see, seemingly there was so not, not so many people that was. I felt kind of safe. Yeah, one thing I'd say that's different between Europe, um, South America, North America, and China. In mm -hmm. China, when the government recommends, right, recommends that you stay inside mm -hmm. and don't travel, that's it. Mm -hmm. People stay inside and people don't travel. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I anyway, I, I had my reasons to go back. So, um, you get married. Yeah. And then I went, so I came back to Shanghai. And I got my documents. Yes, right. I got my finally I got my documents. And then, so once I step off the plane, I saw there's a lot of checkings already. So it's like, oh, it's very different before than before. And um, so I went back home. I, they didn't ask like, okay, uh, so did you got any? Uh, like they didn't check very really thoroughly. And then I just can uh, went on and I went home. And the next day, you know, and then I found out already when I got, uh, going back home, I saw like empty streets and also on the front door of the gates of my sm small community where I live, there's already like a, a total isolation and self right. self control with uh, like uh, um, communities or something. So I know that's kind of like serious already, and but I I. In the, I was I was coming back at night, so nobody knows that I'm coming back. And then the next day, like people knocking on my door, it's like uh, like really really loud. Like uh, I didn't understand why they were because I I didn't know that why people would know I'm back. <laughs> but anyway, they they just knock on my door and then right. they say, "Hey, uh, you didn't re register, right? Did you? So when you come back, you should register yourself." And so I. So they, then they they put me on the list, like I have to be isolate myself for 14 days. That was kind of advice at the time. Right. I was still free, but you know, they, they kind of tell me, hey, you better not to go out and these 14 days don't, don't, don't do anything stupid or things like yeah. that. And let me, let me add context yeah. here, right? So mm -hmm. what took place was while you were gone in Hong Kong, Shanghai started to shut down, but they were shutting down from keeping the virus from coming into Shanghai and into different communities. So overnight, coming into a community, you now had to, we had to get a little card that, that told us, that said, we, we live here. Oh yeah. Now, because they know who we are, we don't always need the card, but they also take a temperature. If you have a temperature that reads high, they write down your information, you're gonna get a knock on your door. Mm -hmm. What they were doing, they're making sure that they're keeping the community safe. So anybody who came in who was not a resident, they can't come in. Right, they will not let you in. And if you came back and and you traveled, and the guards at the front gate, they know if you traveled or not. Right, they know. And if you come back and you've been traveling, and you make it through them, you're gonna get a knock on the door just mm -hmm. like you got. Now, at the time, people thought, especially foreigners, foreigners thought that was just how dare you, right? Yeah. But it kept people safe, right? It was intrusive, but it kept people safe. What are your thoughts? Um, I think it's uh. Now, after all this um, quarantining and and these measurements, I think it's uh, I think China did a pretty good job. I have to admit, you know, I'm also a Hong Konger, so, <laughs> right. but I, I'm I think China did a good job on this because you have to be this strict to really control the virus. The yeah, virus right. is super contagious, so I think Europe has a at the moment in all America has, has a huge problem with. You know, people disobeying or kind of like neglecting the or having their rights the seriousness right of this of this thing so as my parents are and my family are also living in Holland now you know so i I'm kind of worried about them it's like they they might you know because they 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 are they are talking about something like um the what is it called collective immunity. It's oh, like if immunity is kind of um, it's so, if so many people get it, then at some point it'll be. Yeah. I don't know about that, but let's go back to you. Let's go back to you. <laughs> okay. quarantine. So now you have your third quarantine, and this one 
is the first one that is more have more oversight, meaning people are watching you now. Your first two, you did it yourself, right? Yeah. Now the yeah. third one, you have more pressure to, to, to quarantine yourself. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like had to stay at home and, um, but you know, I still have to buy food, right? So I know the gates when there are no people. <laughs> and I will sneak out to buy some, uh, some things I need. Um, yeah, but basically uh, most of the time I, I just stay at home yeah, for a few days and I need to buy some and I will go out. Now, are you married? Did you get married at that point, or no? No, I, I got married after my. Oh, that's that's another funny story. So, um, so I planned my uh, before for the marriage in Shang, in Shanghai. You have to have a photo, right? The right. photo of of the two together. So we we found a place to shoot that uh, photo in Shanghai, and I planned that the fifteenth day that I arrived in Shanghai. The fifteenth, oh, the, the, the day right after. Yeah, the the, right, the day that the I right can after, right. finally go out, right? Oh. So okay, on the day that I'm finally free, I can go out to that uh, place. So that the small neighborhood, it's pretty far actually, and then we travel kind of like one and a half hour or something, and so it's okay. pretty far. So we went there, and then finally, it's the only place in Shanghai mm -hmm. that's still like because photo shooting is uh of shooting is kind of. And you know, it's like you have to put off masks, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of like a regulated um, industry. So uh, yeah, that's the only place we could shoot photos. So we we went there, and then the neighborhood said, "Okay, you have to scan this QR code." So this QR code represent where where did you go in the last fourteen days? Yeah. And I said, "Yeah, it's all right, and you know, it's, um, I should be okay." And then and then my my fiance at that time. Her, her phone was out of battery and then we, we were standing there like I'm trying to register the QR code and she is trying to do this and that and then there was like a man coming far from coming here and I say hey what's what are you guys doing so long here and then this guy is is kind of the more senior guy okay. and he said hey you know have you read this uh, um, sign on this wall this this paper on the wall says in this neighborhood, uh, apart from 14 days, you have to plus five days. And really? Plus five more days um, that you, if you're like this uh, 14 plus five, this is uh, for certain districts, right. which means uh, for certain districts in Shanghai, there's like more, uh, more, more, safe. more strict. Yeah. And then if you because my flight was not from Hong Kong, I flew from uh, like Shenzhen. And Shenzhen, they consider as a high risk. Uh, yeah, uh, well yes, and that time I, I kind of like, oh, that's uh, that's bad. <laughs> and I couldn't. And then we didn't uh, shoot at that at that day. We went, we stayed there for like almost one hour to discuss and negotiate with really? them. And they say, no, no problem. Sorry, we can that you. Okay. Even the uh, the responsible person from the photo shoot also yeah. came, and then. No, it didn't work. Yeah, they were very strict, which I think in this case is is a good thing. But 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 walk us through how you went from so now you finish your you finish your third quarantine, yeah. and now you're going you getting married and you're going to Japan with your mm -hmm. your wife or fiance and her family. Yeah, so we we finally found another friend who could take a photo for us. <laughs> Just like a really private friend and who can take a photo for us. So, so, now, so, so I got married. I got married, and then I. <laughs> it's funny also married and having all these masks. And yeah. So question for you, when you got married, why go in Shanghai? Why then go to Japan during all this virus stuff? Oh yeah. Uh, there's another reason because uh, my, my wife now, current wife is, is now has uh, her apartment rent is over. We have to like relocate okay. so we have to find a new place and, and move all the, our stuff. So that was the reason. One of the well, reasons. She's in, she's in Japan. No, she was still in Shanghai. Together, okay. we were in Shanghai. Okay. That's why we could get married. And then okay. um, also another reason was we want to um, pick up our like customized ring. So it's a ring that we made in Sh in Japan. Okay. So, get the ring on. Yeah, the the, the ring. We haven't I, I, yeah. because I how to say the ceremony was supposed to be happen on May. And now it's going to be okay. The, the ceremony, yeah, because uh, of this thing of this virus. So we don't know when yet, but okay. it's it's uh, maybe this year. Let oh. me give you the first bit of 
marriage advice, okay? Yeah. Never call your wife your current wife. Okay. <laughs> Let's say my wife, okay? That's the first <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So now you guys are in, you're in Japan to see about the rings with her with your wife and her family. And you go you go through another quarantine. Yeah, no, the, this, the funny thing is about in Japan, you know, we, we, were, we were thinking that Japan is also really strict and really, you know, but they weren't. And it, it was just really useful, usual. I mean, people were just like still going to work. And yeah. so I saw Japan. I saw the reports hmm? and, and, you know, Japan got hit kind of hard. I saw the reports very early on because now, now we are, now we're at, I want to say early, early March, right? Yeah. And, and, and I know Japan was very relaxed um, in, in having people wear masks, social distancing, a lot like some other countries are right now. So I, I noticed that as well. Yeah. So the Japan was, which, which is good about Japan is like all people are already, before the pandemic, they already wear masks yeah. as, as their daily habits. Yeah. Also, there's like a lot of like liquids washing. Mm -hmm. Uh, sanitizers around in every shop so that's uh, that's a good thing about Japan they already have, have all these things prepared or like almost like so um, so during my stay in Japan I also tried to isolate myself for fee at least for 14 days I'm not trying to like you know get right. immediately find find my friends and you know just like I know that you know people would still have some uh, like hold on, you know. Now that was that was so this 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 fourth this fourth um, sort of sort of self quarantine, and we got we got to speed up here because we got to get to the end. Yeah. This was this was uh, just, this was you and your wife and her family, correct? No, it's only my wife and me. Okay, so you both you, you both self quarantined. Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, yeah we 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 hired an Airbnb, we stayed there, and then we just uh, yeah basically we stayed there for. The period of quarantine and then after that quarantine and then we kind of went out and meet people again and and we found out very shocking it's like oh it's so usual everybody's still um <laughs> as it is you know right right very, very i imagine it was a very very big difference in china japan not yeah. a culture but this is how yeah. serious people are taking the the outbreak and we know if the government sets that tone People will listen. So while you were in Japan, was the government being aggressive or were they being a little, little, little relaxed? Yeah. What do you mean? They are, are they relaxed or, or in Japan? When you were in Japan, was the government really trying to say, "Hey, this this virus is very serious. Take precautions," or were they just? The, no, I mean, after I talking to some Japanese friends as well, you know, there's like some conspiracy as well that Japanese know that. It's don't, not don't, don't, really don't, don't, don't go into conspiracy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go there. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, some of the uh, my friends know that you know Japanese are trying to hide the real name numbers, you know, because of the the Olympics. They want yeah. to have it happen anyway, so they don't want to yeah affect it. Okay. Uh, so recently, so go ahead. Recently, they, it got cancelled, so they are now re well not cancelled delayed well delayed next year right but i want to fast forward to what i call the real quarantine now right because mm -hmm. you know when you came back to to shanghai yeah. during the phase where china numbers started coming down yeah kind of stopped looking inwards and started saying hey our body is okay now right inside yeah. our house is okay we must now monitor things coming into our body or coming into our house so they really put um, pressure on those international travelers, and international meaning everybody who's coming from somewhere outside of China. And if I'm correct, the regulation was, which has been changing on, almost on a daily basis, but now it's every foreigner who comes in must be quarantined, right? Either at home or in a hotel which you pay for yourself. Matter, as a matter of fact, you can't even fly to Beijing internationally. You, you get routed some, to Shanghai now. So. Take us through when you arrived back to Shanghai and to where you are now on day 10. Um, so <laughs> it took me 30 hours to get back home <laughs> from door right. to door. But, but so, usually, usually, okay, 30 hours, usually it takes you how long? Well, usually it takes uh, six to eight hours. Right. Yeah. And then, so what happened? So I, I flew from Tokyo to to Shanghai and after I arrived Shanghai first of all in 
in the in the plane there was like everybody wearing masks and some people already even in this whole cult right mm -hmm. this. Yeah. it's like oh it's like some sort of doctors or, yeah. <laughs> i don't know what they are yeah. but uh, anyway so we were back and then so when i in, in the plane we waited for three hours just in the plane after we landed right. we waited for three hours like and then they were saying we are checking every plane that are coming in and then you are we your plane is number four so so during that time we were just all people just were some people got got frustrated like what happened and anyway we had waited for three hours in the plane and just nothing nothing to do there and then after we finally can got off the plane um so, so some people came in some from the medics or yeah. some with masks and with costumes come in and that was scary. <laughs> kind yeah. Of scary. yeah that was scary and um but they didn't check in each one of us it's like they were just discussing with some some uh staff of the airplane stewards and then they yeah. just basically and then they got up and then they let us in so after i got in they're like they're like gates after gates after gates of checking with you right. Like well, how, how what's your temperature? Are you where are you from? And also, we had to fill in a form, form a, a health declaration form, declaration. which uh, we have to prove that where we went in the last fourteen days. And so that form is kind of very important. It's right. all, it's the one that decide whether you got um, like hotel quarantine or or a home quarantine kind of right, right. And, hey, like, i gotta jump in because we're running out of time but i know on that form a lot of people tried to put a different country country mm -hmm. down to yeah. act as if they came from somewhere safe and they, they got caught and yeah. you don't want you don't want to to, to misrepresent where you're coming from um on that i know you went through um the test and the test itself took about five six seven eight hours to do but i want to fast forward to um what it's like like now being on what, what i call the real quarantine where in the other four scenarios, you could leave. Can you leave now? No, they have put a do uh, alarm, like a detector uh, next, uh, at my door. So whenever I open the door, they kind of know. Right. Oh, you, have, you, you just uh, open your door. So every, like in these last 12 days, they have put, uh, they have came twice to check my temperature. And they basically gave me a needle like a temperature nice. uh, needle to check my own temperature and then we will have to report that uh, on WeChat every right. day. Right. So, I, so but I just report once. <laughs> Look, <laughs> don't don't play around. I know some I know some other foreigners who came back and they're also luckily they're on home home quarantine. Yeah. And they said that every morning they come and take their trash. Mm -hmm. And one day they said, Well our IE came, we gave our IE the trash. They said your IE shouldn't be coming inside. And she should be taking the trash. So the IE now is under home quarantine at her home, at her home and her family as well. But they couldn't leave. They, they, all the food and everything is brought to them on a daily basis if they, if they order anything. Um, they have tape on the door. So if that tape is broken, like a freshness, like a, like a freshness seal, right? If that seal is broken, they know they've been out. Since then, they've installed alarms also. But the alarm thing is um, they did make a mistake and they left one time. Oh, and, and they knew within two minutes they left. Oh, two they minutes came back with police, police, okay. right? Giving them one warning, one warning, right? One so warning. I know this this um, quarantine is happening for foreigners returning. This is serious. This is not the, the, the other four the self imposed. This is that mandatory. Don't you try? Don't don't you try it? Right? Wait yeah. your fourteen days. But yeah. I know that this is much more serious, and I, I think it's effective. You know? Yeah, uh, I think um, it's necessary. I mean, I, I would like to collaborate on this. I mean, yeah, I like your like hesitation. It's necessary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, another another thing I need, I want to also um, say is like, once they found out that I'm Dutch, you know, they say, oh, so you ha you have you are using your Dutch passport. So are you Dutch? So are you coming from Holland as well? So once they know that you are a foreigner, I, I think you all, all, all also feel so. Um, really clearly is like Chinese are very really, very kind of scared of yes. war at the moment. <laughs> it's like they think like, you know, oh you you must be from Europe or something and then then they will try to stay away from you.
Yeah, so well, let me add this. I got, I'm sorry, I, I got to close this call out session. Now, first of all, thank you for sharing your story. It's a great story. Um, I know that now in Shanghai, I'm not sure about other parts of China, they are starting to treat foreigners differently. Um, some foreigners are getting denied access to certain places because, you know, Chinese fair things. Once you put the word out that foreigners are bringing back, then all foreigners turn into the bad guy. Luckily, I haven't felt that because I'm in my, my neighborhood. They know me here, but mm -hmm. some foreigners are feeling that. So I hope I uh, hope um, there's not too much pushback on foreigners here in China. But him, thanks for sharing your story. I hope a lot of folks can uh, learn something. I think the theme, of what I'm getting from this is, in every scenario, you took. You took the, the the you took the initiative to stay home for that yeah. fourteen days, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You assume that you had something. Stay home. Don't put yourself or anybody else at risk. And I hope other people are seeing that pattern um, to stay home and to avoid going outside as much as you can and 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 stay safe. Yeah, that's uh, that's the that's the thing that we can do, right? At the moment. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Ham. I appreciate your time. Thank you too. All right.